I need some yellow paper for my next video, and I thought I would show you how I could make legal paper that I could use in my video. I take an, uh, here's the color I'm going to use for the legal paper, and I go to filters. We'll go to filters, we'll drop down to distorts, we'll go to blinds, and the number of segments, I think that's how many there's going to be inside of here, but I'm not sure. We'll take a look and we'll see. There's 20 for displacement and 15 for the number of segments. Okay, so let's see. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So what is, we'll take a look back up in here and uh, so that you can have that in your mind. 15, that's the number of divisions there are in there. And 20, I don't know what that is. That may be the size. It might be the width. Okay. Anyway, here's what we have. When I put two of them, and I didn't want to do two. I'm like, can't get rid of one. Okay. So now I've got this uh, too high here. I mean, I've got. I want. I want that little red lines that legal that legal pads have in it. So let me get rid of this head part right here. We'll get rid of that, and let me choose. Let me select the select none. Zoom up in on it. And I want to choose the top row and make it red because in legal pads that top row is red. So let's go like this and there we've chosen it. Now if I narrow it back down again, put it back down to size, I can go in here and go to red. I'll pick a red and it's not a bright red I don't think. I think it's kind of a little off red is what it is. I don't think it's that off. Well, we'll just put another line up there and we'll see. So let's paint that line and let's give a little bit of a width to our brush so it, so it, it does real easy. And there's the legal paper, just like that. That's simple. And now we'll select none. And we can save this as an image and use it anywhere we want. Now what I'm going to do here is uh, we have a new from visible. And I'm going to make a copy of that. And uh, in between here I'm going to put a, a blank layer. The reason is I'm going to show you another thing that's kind of neat here. Um, there's a color, there's a layer of paint. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to paint the layer below. That's painted, the white. So if I Get rid of that and you see the white below. Now let's take and see if we can tear a piece of paper out of that uh, yellow notepad. We'll do it like this. This way it's not going to be real regular. Because I can take that selection, undo invert, We'll take that selection right there, and let's take that selection and we'll distort it. And what this does, it'll make like little tear edges to it. And we'll try it just like it come. We can you can you can experiment on your own, but I think this will give a pretty good measurement right here and there. Now you see it's not a smooth line; it's a jagged line. Now we'll select and invert that. We want to delete the layer we're on, and del and now we'll delete it, and select none. Okay, that's nice. It probably been a nicer if I was straight on top and tore the sides, but I guess it really doesn't matter. We'll just do another one then. Slide this down. We'll duplicate that one, because that's a good one. That's the one we want to take on top. That's got all the lines and stuff to it. That one is nothing. Okay, so here, let's cut it like this. Um, yeah, we'll take it like this. This will give me a fairly 
straight edge. And we'll select from path. And we'll take the selection and we'll distort it. Then we'll select it and invert it. And go up here to this layer, the yellow, and delete it. And there you see there's a little bit of a jagged line to everything, like it's been torn out of a book. Now you could emphasize that just a hair. Let's do let's do this. We'll take it, slide this down. Put it back to the layer to image size. Again, to, I've mentioned before, if we zoom right up on this real close, and we'll do that, you see that line's not perfect. It just isn't perfect there. So when you select and you invert, you select this, you won't get all that. But if I select and invert it, I can. So what we're going to do to show you what I mean, we're going to go here, and we're going to actually try to clean that up so I can have a sharp edge. Let's go like this and select it outside. We'll take our selection and we'll grow it by two. Select, grow by two. And see that got rid of all that messy stuff in between. That's where, it, where it, uh, when it cut the line it wasn't perfect. So now I can delete that and it's gone. Now we'll take that selection and invert it. And what that means is we're choosing just the paper and nothing more. Just the paper and nothing more. We'll put a layer underneath it. Okay. And in that layer underneath it, we're going to paint it black. Now I had to cut off the edges because had I had those little edges bleeding through, part of this black would have shown. It had to be a nice clean line. But now we've got that on here. I can take that bottom layer, click it, and displace it, move it off to one side. And again, we always take and make everything the layer size. And there, make it a little bit fainter. And I can even add a touch of blur, even though it's not an even edge. I can put a Gaussian blur to it. So it looks like that's not bad. Now it looks more like a shadow coming off of that. And of course it's adjustable right here. Until these two are merged, that can be adjusted and played with all you want to in there. You can put it really, really close. You can put it out for it. You can put it up like here, so close to it that you barely that that does nothing more really than to make it look like a piece of paper laying there. Okay, let's merge these two down together. We'll merge them together. God, I don't want to merge it that. I kind of like it close though. I guess the thing is, you just say, let's make a copy, move it out of sight. Let's make a copy and move it out of sight. That way we've got them both down here. And I can take and merge these in. It doesn't matter because I have uh, two layers I can redo. Okay, so merge down. And as a merged item, it's all together. Now let's see if we can put some text in here. This is different for me. I haven't tried this. I'm going to see if I can put text on these lines. Space it on the line so it looks like it really belongs in there, like somebody's written there. So here we're going to take and we're going to click to put some text in. Now let's pick our text style. We want to find a some kind of a script. There's a dancing script. This was, a, I actually got that from, uh, okay. 
this is cancel. I don't know how that happened. Okay. This is from this is from Google Fonts. Okay, we're going to go down a line and write, um, this is from Google Fonts. It is a great resource for fonts. For fonts and can be downloaded can be downloaded for free okay let's see if we can stretch that out to make it fit right in there so we'll go to this here and we'll increase the spacing between the words First, we'll take the bot, the top one, and we'll set it where we want it to be at. Right there, that's right on there. So now we want to go here, select those fonts again, select all this, and see as I increase that, how it slides down, and if I slide it down far enough, it'll set it right on the line. Look at that. Now we can take that text, they take that to image size, and look at that. Isn't that something? Isn't that an amazing thing? This actually looks like a little note that somebody made or wrote and tore out, except that writing is too good. But there are fonts with a, with a more nonchalant writing that you could get by with. But now I can make fake text and little torn pieces of paper because why my whole goal is when this gets over is to make a page out of what would be, look like a art journal. So now I know another secret, how I can make a torn sheet of legal paper with writing on it. Hey, I hope you enjoy this video. And have a nice day. And if you like this, you want to learn more about GIMP. You want to learn more about program about graphics programs. Subscribe. Hey, it's a free ride, and I love to teach people. I love to show people what to do here. Thank you very much. Hey, if you like this, share it. That sharing is really, really a good thing for me. That's a good way to show appreciation. Share my videos. Thanks again. Bye.